Meet Gustav, a colossal Nile crocodile shrouded in mystery and intrigue. His reputation precedes him, with rumors swirling that he's devoured anywhere from 200 to 300 unfortunate souls. In the heart of Africa, locals speak of him in hushed tones, their fear palpable. Despite numerous attempts by fearless hunters to capture him, Gustav remains an enigmatic figure, evading every effort to bring him down. Is he a creature of flesh and blood, or is he a phantom of the imagination, like the Loch Ness Monster? This is the fascinating story about Gustav, the huge Nile crocodile. This is fierce. Nestled snugly between the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Tanzania, you'll find Burundi, a pint-sized powerhouse of history and culture. Don't let its small stature fool you. This place has been around the block a few times. It's got a claim to fame in the world of fine pottery that's as old as time itself. In these small fishing communities, you'll find houses packed like sardines in a can. It's like a countryside jigsaw puzzle with all the pieces snugly fit together. Back in the day, they huddled up like this for safety reasons. You know, it's easier to defend a tight-knit area than a scattered one. But you'd think nobody expected trouble from the river's most infamous resident, Gustav. This dude's been terrorizing the Rizizi River that connects Lake Tanganyika and Lake Kivu for what feels like forever. Locals will tell you Gustav's got a rap sheet that's a mile long. Rumor has it he's offed hundreds of folks along the riverbanks and up north at Lake Tanganyika. Now here's the creepy part. Gustav doesn't just eat his victims. Nah, he's got a more sinister hobby. He drags them into the water, watches them drown, and then leaves their lifeless bodies just lying there on the shore, untouched. In these tight-knit communities, where safety in numbers used to be the name of the game, Gustav's the ultimate wild card a menace that defies all the rules. Nobody knows Gustav's exact size, but those who've seen him up close say he's a real monster, more than 20 feet long and weighing a whopping 2,000 pounds. When you're that huge, you stand out in the neighborhood. He's so big that even small guns can't hurt him. What's really fascinating is that Gustav has been around for a long time. People started reporting his attacks on villagers back in 1987, Locals were terrified of him. Then in 2001, a herpetologist named Patrice Fay decided to give him the name Gustav, and that's when he became a legend. Ever wondered what sets Gustav apart? He's a real life enigma, straddling the line between fact and legend. Three times the size of regular crocs in Burundi, he's not your average predator. Due to his size, he's selective about his prey favoring slower targets like hefty wildebeests, massive hippos, and sadly, humans. Gustav's usual haunt? A cozy river island near Lake Tanganyika. But when it's time to find a mate, he embarks on a journey along the Rizizi River, where he's at his most dangerous. While claims of him devouring 300 people might be exaggerated, it's hard to pin down the exact number when dealing with a wild creature like Gustav. After all, he's just following his instincts. You know what we know about Gustav? He's a real thorn in the villager's side. This dude's got a taste for human flesh, and rumor has it he even took down a military commander once. But here's the kicker. He doesn't always finish his meals. Locals reckon he's not just after a snack, he's in it for the thrill. Now add a dash of chaos to the mix. The whole region was in the midst of a civil war, which gave the myth of Gustav a little boost. Since Burundi waved goodbye to Belgian rule back in 62, it's been a roller coaster ride of violence, ethnic tensions, and unrest. In 93, a brutal civil war kicked off between the Tutsi and Hutu groups, lasting over a decade and claiming around 200,000 lives. Now, the Rizizi River splits Burundi from two other hotspots the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC, and Rwanda. Both these places have their own laundry lists of violence and turmoil. The DRC's been in a state of unrest since the 90s, and since it got its independence in 1960, it's been a political roller coaster. Right now, the Eastern DRC is a battleground, featuring UN troops, Congolese security forces, ethnic militias, and a whole bunch of external interests all mixing it up. 
It's not too far-fetched to think that some of these casualties could have been blamed on our croc buddy. But truth be told, there's not enough data or records to back that up. Now, what makes this croc truly one of a kind is the fact that all attempts to take him down or capture him have been nothing short of spectacular failures. It's like he's got a suit of armor for skin. The guy's covered in scars, some from what seemed like bullets, and there's even a wound on his shoulder that tells the tale of a run-in with armed soldiers. Talk about a tough customer. But here's where it gets really juicy. The rumors and tales about Gustav just keep getting wilder by the day. To the folks of Burundi, he's not just a croc, he's the stuff of legends. In African cultures, mythical creatures are like the rock stars of stories known for their dazzling appearances and unique traits. Colors in African myths carry deep cultural and spiritual significance. Red, symbolizing blood, harks back to a history of slavery and represents both danger and vitality. Yellow, reminiscent of the sun and the gleam of gold, signifies prosperity, divinity, and life's brighter side. It's even a royal color in some African traditions, adorning traditional clothing and ceremonies. But here's the twist. These very colors are chosen to weave the tale of our legendary croc, Gustav. They symbolize the danger he brings, the blood he's shed, and his divine strength that sets him apart from the local croc gang. Animals adorned with bling often represent transformation, bridging the gap between humans and the animal realm. This motif often leads to tales of creatures with supernatural abilities. Crocs themselves have long been linked to a spiritual strength, especially in West Africa. They're associated with gods and goddesses presiding over springs and rivers, seen as water beings revealing hidden truths. One famous example is Mamiwata, a mermaid figure dating back to the late 15th century. It's possible that stories merge these concepts, deities or spirits, with a massive, fearsome, real-life predator in Burundi. When it comes to seeing crocs like Gustav as spiritual forces, there's quite a story to unpack. In different cultures, folks tend to chalk up puzzling events to spiritual forces or entities. Crocs, those cunning ambush predators, embody patience before pouncing. And in the natural world, death often seems random and unpredictable, which can send shivers down anyone's spine. But here's the twist. Crocs symbolize the dicey dance of fate. They represent life's unpredictability and the fear of the unknown. People have this notion that crocs from the spirit world help explain why death seems so darn random in nature. It's a way to make sense of the chaos, a comforting framework, even if it's a bit symbolic or abstract. This belief helps folks deal with the fear of the unknown. And here's the kicker. In most cultures, real crocs aren't the usual suspects for human deaths. When someone's on the business end of a croc's jaws, it's often seen as justice for wrongdoers or bad folks using magic to become crocs and settle scores. Now, Gustav being a human devouring machine elevates him to legendary status, a living example of mythical beasts found in folktales. Watching Gustav in action lets people witness traits often attributed to mythical creatures. Because of his impressive body count, locals tell tourists to steer clear of Gustav's turf. He so feared that even Hollywood couldn't resist. The movie Primeval took Gustav's real-life legend and ran with it. In the film, a news team goes to Burundi to bag a colossal 25-foot croc, but it turns into a real-life horror show as they battle the ferocious beast. Gustav's tales even cross borders, capturing the attention of experts worldwide. French filmmaker Vincent Mounier got wind of the story and crafted a documentary in 2004 titled Capturing the Killer Croc. He teamed up with pathologist Patrice Fay, who had been researching Gustav since the late 90s. In fact, most of what we know about the legendary croc comes from Patrice Fay's captivating PBS documentary. The whole plot revolves around experts trying to capture and study this incredible beast. In the documentary, nailing down this beast's exact weight or length proves to be as elusive as the creature itself. But here's what we do know. This dude is massive. Back in 2002, a few officials tossed out numbers, suggesting he could easily top 18 feet and weigh in at over a ton. 
Locals, on the other hand, were telling tales of a croc that could have clocked in at over 25 feet and been around for a century. Now, our eagle-eyed experts gave the croc a good look. And guess what? He had a full set of teeth. If he'd been as ancient as the locals claimed, he'd be practically toothless by then. So, at the time of the documentary, this big fella was probably in his 60s, with plenty of growth still ahead. But the plot thickens. Three bullet scars decorated his body, and his shoulder had seen better days. The locals had apparently taken a few shots at him, but this croc scales were like a bulletproof vest. Bullets couldn't touch him, which drove the villagers nuts. So the documentary crew decided it was time to put their theories to the test. With folks dying in the area, they wanted to move this beast elsewhere, so the residents could fish and gather food without fearing for their lives. Their plan? Classic croc trap, 30 feet long, with live bait dangling over the water. They even had an infrared camera to catch the action, but night after night, no luck. They switched things up, swapping chicken for a live goat as bait. But alas, the goat vanished along with the wrecked trap after a storm. Did the croc really pull off the heist? No one knew because the camera was toast. Experts believed he had the smarts and strength for it. The documentary crew didn't give up, setting a couple of smaller traps as a last-ditch effort. But the crafty croc proved he was no pushover. After two years of studying this elusive beast, the scientists had a two-month window to wrap up their story. Political turmoil in the region added to the chaos and danger. Even with all their time and effort, they couldn't gather the data they wanted. The task was just too risky and unproductive. Perhaps with more time, they could have cracked the code. But with their tight schedule, the giant croc remained a free spirit. So here's the burning question. Where's Gustav hanging out these days? According to National Geographic, the last sighting was in 2008. But hold on, locals swear they spotted him in 2015. Now some rumors did a victory lap in 2019, claiming this legendary creature met his end but that's about as likely as finding a unicorn. A croc this size biting the dust would have made headlines, right? There'd be pics, investigations, the whole shebang. That's why most experts think Gustav might still be out there, cruising at around 78 years old, give or take. But where could he be? Well, it's possible he pulled a moving to a new neighborhood stunt. The land he used to frequent turned into farmland, scaring off his dinner options. When humans start planting crops, it messes with the wildlife's crib and food supply. So they pack their bags and relocate. And let's talk real estate. There's a boatload of space for this croc to hide. The Rizizi River stretches 73 miles. Lake Tinganyika covers 12,700 square miles. And Lake Kivu is no small fry either. And in the massive forest, you've got prime hiding spots. Now, here's the twist. Some locals think Gustav might have hit the road due to a rise in young Nile crocs in the area. Those whippersnappers are faster and more agile, chowing down on fast food while our boy Gustav's built for a buffet of bigger prey like buffaloes. So here's the deal. Gustav's life is shrouded in mystery. But one thing's for sure. The myths and legends about him are alive and well. He's still the stuff of nightmares in Burundi. The truth is, he could pop up when and where you least expect it, making a meal out of someone who wasn't looking. Until we've got concrete evidence of his demise, it's best to stay on your toes in these waters. You never know what might be lurking beneath.